The original 777 became one of Boeing's most successful long-range aircraft. It was admired for its efficiency and reliability. Then, aviation changed. The 787 introduced composite materials and high-efficiency aerodynamics, and Airbus responded with the A350. It was lighter and more economical on long routes. Airlines wanted a successor to the 777-300ER that kept its payload and range, but with performance that matched the newest generation of wide bodies. Simply modifying the old wing was not enough. To achieve the improvements airlines demanded, Boeing needed a structure with significantly better lift-to-drag efficiency, lower weight, and also the ability to support new ultra-high bypass engines. That challenge set the stage for the 777 X-Wing. It was a clean sheet redesign that would become the defining element of the aircraft. As those pressures narrowed the choices Boeing could make, the shape of the solution began forming. The 777 X-Wing doesn't stand out because it is large. It's because of how it uses that size. With a span exceeding 71 meters, it has the highest aspect ratio of any Boeing commercial aircraft. A long slender wing reduces induced drag and increases aerodynamic efficiency during cruise. Compared with the 777-300ER, the new wing has a more pronounced taper and a smoother curvature along the leading edge. Engineers used thousands of computational fluid dynamics simulations to shape the final geometry and optimize sweep and camber for fuel-efficient flight at high altitude. What is visible is a wing designed to lift a heavy wide body across long distances while burning less fuel per passenger. And it's shaped by a fundamentally different aerodynamic philosophy. But a wing with that geometry needed a structure capable of supporting that shape without adding weight. The switch from metal to carbon fiber reinforced polymer is one of the largest structural changes between the 777 and the 777X. Composites offer advantages that aluminum cannot match. It promises lower weight, resistance to fatigue as well as the ability to tailor stiffness by adjusting fiber orientation. Boeing has stated that the 777X wing construction draws from experience with the 787 but scaled for a larger aircraft. Each wing is made from large composite panels laid by automated fiber placement machines and cured in industrial autoclaves. The spars, ribs, and skins are integrated through bonding and fastening techniques designed for strength without unnecessary weight. While Boeing publishes general material descriptions, specifics such as resin formulations and internal reinforcement patterns are not publicly disclosed. These details determine how the wing handles long-term stress and vibrational loads, and they form part of Boeing's proprietary structural strategy. Before we move forward, let us ask you this. If you follow material science, what do you think is the next breakthrough after carbon fiber? Share your insights in the comments below and we'll highlight the most intriguing ideas at the end. One of the most visible innovations on the 777X is its folding wingtip that's designed to give the aircraft the aerodynamic benefits of a long wingspan while still fitting into existing airport gates. Each tip measures about 3.5 meters and folds upward when the aircraft is on the ground. FAA documentation outlines the essential components hinge assemblies, locking pins, position sensors, and cockpit indications. The system prevents the aircraft from applying takeoff thrust unless the wingtips are fully extended and locked. What remains undisclosed are deeper logic controls like software routines, redundancy pathways, and internal load monitoring thresholds. A wing this large must withstand enormous aerodynamic forces. To address this, Boeing integrated gust load alleviation through rapid adjustments of control surfaces. When the wing encounters a disturbance, the system responds within fractions of a second to redistribute aerodynamic pressure. The underlying concept has been discussed publicly, though the exact algorithms used to control it remain confidential. The wing's composite construction also contributes to strength. Composites allow engineers to tune stiffness so the wing bends predictably under load, reducing stress concentrations along the spars. This bending is a designed behavior that improves both comfort and structural longevity. During certification, the 777 X-Wing underwent static and fatigue test. One publicly documented event was the static test in which the wing failed before reaching its target load. It prompted reinforcement and redesign. Boeing has stated that subsequent testing met all regulatory requirements, though the full structural margins are not disclosed. The flex of the 777X wing is one of its most defining characteristics. Long composite wings bend more than traditional aluminum structures. 
that flex is an essential aerodynamic tool rather than an undesired side effect. As the wing loads during climb and cruise, it rises smoothly and redistributes forces along its length. This flex reduces peak stress and improves ride quality by softening the wing's response to turbulence. Unlike rigid wings, which transmit more force to the fuselage, flexible wings absorb disturbances through controlled deformation. The flex also helps maintain efficiency. Wing angle is altered relative to the airflow at different points along its span. This bending contributes to an optimal lift distribution. However, the exact elasticity profiles are not released outside the company, but flex alone isn't enough. A wing of this size and flexibility requires a sophisticated network of control surfaces. The 777 X-Wing incorporates flaperons, spoilers, ailerons, and high lift devices, all coordinated through a fly-by-wire system that constantly adjusts to maintain stability and efficiency. The large flaperons combine roll control with additional lift during takeoff and landing. Spoilers assist with descent and braking, while the ailerons near the wingtips fine-tune lateral control. Because the wing is long and flexible, these surfaces must work together more dynamically than on shorter, stiffer wings. Wings on large aircraft serve not only as aerodynamic structures, but also as fuel tanks. With the 777X, the expanded wingspan provides increased internal volume, allowing the aircraft to carry more fuel without adding fuselage tanks. This supports the 777X's long-range missions. Fuel inside the wing influences its behavior. As the aircraft burns fuel, the weight distribution shifts and changes how the wing flexes and how loads are carried. Engineers designed fuel transfer systems to maintain the aircraft's center of gravity by using pumps and baffles to manage movement. The wide span allows fuel to be spread over a larger area to reduce stress and help stabilize the aircraft. With a total capacity of about 52,300 gallons or 198,000 liters, the wing houses multiple tanks. Even temperature changes are considered. The large surface area of the composite skin allows the fuel to act as a thermal buffer and moderates wing temperatures at altitude. The wing's high aspect ratio reduces drag and increases fuel efficiency. The flexible structure enhances stability, while the wingtip extension enlarges the effective span without compromising airport compatibility. These aerodynamic gains support the GE-9X engines, allowing them to operate efficiently across long distances. Boeing's published figures indicate around a 10% improvement in fuel burn compared with the 777-300ER, with the wing accounting for a significant portion of that improvement. The wing also enables the aircraft to maintain smooth airflow at high altitudes. Each element works together to make the 777X competitive with newer wide bodies while preserving the core strengths of the original 777. Engineers evaluate flutter characteristics, vibrations, stiffness, thermal behavior, and aerodynamic loads. Boeing has shown footage of these tests, hydraulic rigs bending the wing, environmental chambers simulating temperature extremes, ground tests validating the wingtip mechanism. Flight testing further refined the wing's behavior. Observers have noted the graceful upward flex during takeoff and the stability during turbulence. While Boeing releases some performance data, the detailed results remain internal. This is typical for commercial aircraft, where only regulatory required data are public. Once those evaluations were complete, the broader meaning of the design became clearer. The 777X wing marks a shift in how wide-body aircraft achieve efficiency. Instead of relying solely on engine improvements, the wing itself becomes a primary tool for performance. Its span, flexibility, folding tips, and composite construction represent a culmination of decades of aerodynamic research brought together in a single structure. Its influence will extend beyond this aircraft. Future commercial designs will likely explore even longer spans, smarter control surfaces, and even more advanced composites. The 777X wing demonstrates that large aircraft can adopt technologies once reserved for smaller or experimental platforms, reshaping expectations for long-haul travel. About that question from earlier, Current research supports thermoplastic composites, hybrid laminates, and nano-reinforced polymers because they offer faster manufacturing and a better damage tolerance. If this breakdown helped you understand what makes the 777X wing so distinctive, subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts below, especially which part of this wing's design you found most interesting. It's heavier than a tank, 
bigger than a train car, and it's powerful enough to launch a fully loaded Boeing 777 into the sky for 15 hours non-stop. This isn't the work of any engine, it's the GE90, the largest and most powerful jet engine ever put on a passenger plane. And inside this giant monster are parts so delicate that a microscopic crack could bring it all down. The GE90 redefined long-haul flight when it first launched in 1995, with over 127,900 pounds of thrust and fan blades taller than an adult. Before it came along, transoceanic travel depended on four engine giants like the 747. But the GE90 made it possible for a twin-engine jet to fly routes beyond the Atlantic and the Pacific. This changed how airlines operated forever. The 777 became the backbone of long-haul fleets, and the GE90 was the muscle that made it possible. But raw power wasn't going to cut it alone. Every inch of this engine had to be carefully designed because if even one part failed, the entire system could collapse. The front of the GE90 is impossible to miss. At over 128 inches across, it is wider than the fuselage of a Boeing 737. And yet, it only has 22 blades. Compare that to older engines, which had more than 40 or 50. But why design the engine to have fewer fans? Because these blades are bigger, lighter, and far more efficient. Each blade is made of carbon fiber composite with a titanium leading edge. They're built using a process called resin transfer molding, then cured in autoclave so large they could fit a bus inside. The shape isn't random either. They're curved into a distinctive scimitar design to not only grab more air, but also reduce noise. This is one reason the 777 is quieter than older jets, despite being much larger. And the wild part is that those blade tips travel at close to 1,000 miles per hour, just under the speed of sound. During testing, GE literally fired frozen turkeys into them to simulate bird strikes. The blades survived. Each blade costs more than a luxury car, and when you line up all 22 of them, they form the hypnotic spinning disc that feeds the rest of the engine. But once the air is pulled inside, things get even more extreme. Behind the fan lies the compressor, which takes air at normal pressure and squeezes it until it's 40 times denser. Imagine crushing a room full of air into a shoebox, and that's basically what's happening here. The GE90's compressor has three stages of low-pressure compression, followed by 10 stages of high-pressure compression. Each stage has blades shaped slightly differently and tuned to gradually build pressure without stalling the flow. The engine uses variable stator vanes that pivot in real time to optimize airflow at every speed and altitude. Over 1,200 kilograms of air per second rushes through the GE90. Each of the compressor blades is forged from nickel super alloys and inspected for cracks invisible to the human eye. Because even one blade failing under the enormous stress would have catastrophic effects. Before we move forward, here's a question for you. Why do you think the GE90's compressor uses concentric shafts that spin at different speeds instead of a single shaft for all stages? Let us know your guesses in the comments below, and we'll get back to it at the end of the video. The combustor is where air and fuel meet. It's an annular combustor in the shape of a ring, where 30 fuel nozzles spray atomized jet fuel into the compressed air. A tiny spark sets off a fireball at over 2,000 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to melt most metals in seconds. So, how does it survive? With film cooling where thousands of microscopic holes line the walls of the combustor, a thin sheet of cooler air flows across the metal and creates a protective shield against the inferno inside. At its core, the flame burns at nearly 2,500 degrees Celsius, but by the time it reaches the turbines, it's cooled to about 1,500 degrees Celsius. That's still hotter than the melting point of steel. The turbines sit just behind the combustor and harvest energy from the rushing exhaust gases. They spin at over 10,000 revolutions per minute and glow red hot from the heat. But these blades aren't ordinary metal. Each one is grown from a single crystal of nickel alloy. No grain boundaries, no weak points. It's a material science breakthrough that allows them to survive temperatures and forces that would destroy almost anything else. They're hollow with air channels running through them to keep them cool. And they're coated in ceramic layers to withstand heat above 1,600 degrees Celsius. Even more impressive is that they're designed to twist slightly under stress, so they only reach their perfect aerodynamic shape when they're running in actual flight conditions. The design is genius, 
It's a blade that isn't perfect until it's on fire at 30,000 feet. Heat is the GE90's greatest enemy, and cooling is its hidden weapon. Inside, air is bled from the compressor and channeled into microscopic passages to stop the turbines and combustor from melting. The materials are chosen with precision, titanium in the fan and front sections for strength and weight savings, carbon fiber composites for the giant blades, nickel alloys and ceramics for the hot turbines. Even the bolts are matched to expand at the same rate as the metal they hold, so nothing cracks under stress. This quiet war against heat is what allows the GE90 to run for thousands of hours without failure. An engine this massive can't rely entirely on metal and fire. In fact, it has a brain. The GE90 is fully managed by Full Authority Digital Engine Control, or FADEC. Think of it as the autopilot for the engine itself. Instead of pilots manually adjusting throttle settings like in older jets, FADEC constantly monitors thousands of parameters every second for things like fuel flow and temperatures and makes micro-adjustments faster than any human ever could. The result? Maximum thrust when you need it and safer shutdowns if something goes wrong. It also means that every GE90 performs identically no matter which 777 it's on. Airlines get consistency, passengers get reliability, and engineers get endless streams of data to predict issues before they happen. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And let us know in the comments what you find most fascinating about the GE90. We love hearing your thoughts. At GE's massive assembly plants, the GE90 comes together piece by piece. Cranes move modules the size of trucks into position. The engine is built in sections fan, compressor, combustor, turbines. Each module is tested individually before being joined to the whole. By the end, the engine stretches more than 24 feet long, weighs over 8 tons, and contains more moving parts than a Swiss watch. Only this watch doesn't tell time. It hurls a 300-ton plane across oceans. Then the GE90 undergoes rigorous testing. Engines like the GE90 are tortured before they ever see a plane. They're chained down and blasted at full power in test cells the size of hangars. The noise reaches over 140 decibels. For reference, that's louder than a rock concert. Massive underground ducts are used to absorb the roar so entire neighborhoods don't shake. Engineers simulate hail, freezing rain, sandstorms, even volcanic ash. They shoot birds and ice blocks into the fan. In one legendary test, GE deliberately broke a fan blade while the engine was at maximum thrust just to see what would happen. The engine tore itself apart, but the debris stayed inside exactly as designed. Safety is never optional in aviation. The GE90 was about brute force and efficiency both. Its high bypass ratio meant that most air flowed around the core instead of through it. This makes it quieter and more fuel efficient. Its specific fuel consumption sits at around 0.52 pounds of fuel per pound of thrust per hour, and that's remarkable for an engine of this size. Later, upgrades brought 3D printed fuel nozzles, lighter materials, and advanced sensors that beam real-time performance data to airlines mid-flight. And then came the next chapter, the GE9X for the 777X. Even larger, even lighter, with fan blades so thin they look impossible, it's already shaping the future of long-haul travel. The GE90 is proof of what humans can achieve when they push engineering to the edge. It reminds us how every leap in technology changes the way we travel and connect. And about that question from earlier. The GE90 uses two concentric shafts, so each compressor spins at its optimal speed, the low pressure slower, the high pressure faster, maximizing efficiency and preventing instability. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of aviation's greatest machines, hit like and subscribe. Because the next story we uncover might be even bigger.